What's up guys, welcome back to another lightning collection video. Now the question that I always get asked is are these figures worth it? So are they worth the money? Are they worth the potential quality control issue? And if you've got the originals, are they worth replacing or adding to your collection? Well only you can decide that, but hopefully this video will help you make that decision. And it has been a little while since I've had these figures now, so I've had a good chance to play about with them, which I often do. And it has given me a good chance to take a look at any potentially quality control issues, how they're lasting up, are they getting loose as you go through, and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully today we'll be able to answer some of those questions for you. So after a lot of leaks and speculation throughout the year, at January 17th, these were available for pre-order, starting with the blue and the yellow. Obviously, we're now near the end of the year and we have been able to complete these and there was a slight gap in the time that the yellow and blue come out and then we had the chance to grab the rest. And in my opinion, the remastered figures did get a lot of people excited, especially starting with the Blue Ranger and a lot of people were able to finish off their MMPR collection knowing that this Blue Ranger was going to come out and the price hike on the original one was something that you no longer needed. And when these first dropped, that was evident that we were going to see this deluxe sort of style box along with the deluxe wave price point. So the boxes of these are nice. They have got nice artwork all around, plastering the 30th year anniversary logo all around. Now, I do like the back of the boxes of these because it shows you exactly what should be inside and it gives you a little bit more information on the character itself. But for an inbox collector, I would say... It's a massive risk so if you're buying this to keep this on a shelf the only really way you've got to stack them to see any sort of different artwork is at the side like so but i would have loved to have seen what they would have done with these in the old style boxes so here i've got a green ranger which just lives on my shelf and he is sealed and will stay boxed which is why he's in this little protective case but i don't know if there's anyone out there so far who's made cases for these so those that are collecting in box have got to bear that in mind. And also the massive thing for me is knowing that Hasbro do have some quality control issues. How do you know what you've got inside is what you're getting? So for me, the window box is a lot better so we can see exactly what he should have and what's inside. And it's quite evident that if something's missing, you don't even need to open it. No matter which way you are gonna display these, the old style window box just takes it for me 100%. And of course, again, for the inbox collector, if you're using this to complete your MMPR collection, you're gonna have potentially how many ever of these, even just the five from MMPR plus this one, it's gonna definitely ruin your display. So you're gonna end up stacking like this and then have the others either side. To me, although the box is really, really nice, it's got that matte finish with the gloss over the top, you just can't beat these original boxes. And of course, when you get your figure out of the box, this is what you're met with. So this is from a different box, which was, of course, the MMPR single release of Adam. So it did come with a windowed box, and then this one came in the remastered. So this is the remastered. And you can see that there are some differences. So obviously, the big one is being that the remaster figures do have pinless joints and then we've got the extra paint apps. You can just see the difference in the detail. The black on this looks beautiful. And to be honest, this one isn't as bad, but you can just see with the old neck joint that we're starting to get some split in there and we don't get any of that on the new neck joint. The face sculpt looks like it's had a bit more effort put into this one. And then of course it comes with everything else that we know about the remastered figures. But just for me, having that nice pinless joint, the extra paint apps and not having cracks in the necks and stuff like that. So you're not worried about whether anything's gonna necessarily break. However, when you are looking at these pinless figures, you do have to be a little bit careful knowing that any drop down hips can potentially be loose. Any joints can potentially be loose. The joints on the females are very, very soft and very thin, but they are a very good looking figure. And speaking of good looking figures, this does look pretty nice with the old Jason head sculpt, but you do have to bear in mind that the red one does not come with the civilian head. So you do have to account for the fact that you're either gonna have to try and buy one, buy an extra Red Ranger figure from the original release or go without. So if your intention is to pose them as I have, you are gonna have to hunt down one of these if you don't have one already. The head sculpts on the remastered figures are pretty nice, but I would say that this is probably one of, if not the best Jason David Frank head sculpt that we have got in the line. Now, 
A lot of these head sculpts are a bit more characterized rather than actor likeness, I would say. So to me, this looks like it sort of comes straight out of a comic book and it doesn't not look like him. I feel like they've done a really good job with the hair and where they've sort of given the shave at the side and the style that he would have had. And I fully understand that this is from a particular episode, but this one just takes it for me. So if you are looking for them perfect head sculpts, this is the one for you. However, unfortunately this one does seem to go for a lot of money at the minute and I don't see that coming down anytime soon in my opinion. When you're looking at this, this is what you're going to get out of the box in your remastered Green Ranger. So you've got no shield, you've got the dodgy holster, the head sculpt that doesn't look quite look right. Whereas on this one, you've got everything you need in the box. For example, the Sword of Darkness, the shield already on the figure and a really nice head sculpt. So if you do want to complete the Green Ranger look, then you do have to go and purchase the red one as well, unfortunately, and take these bits off of the red and put it on the green. Now, this is something that keeps coming up quite a lot, I see on social media. This is a thing for everybody, and I don't know whether this is something where, during manufacturing, there was something stuck to it so they could paint it and then take it off after, because every video that I've seen and every photo, you will have this little issue with your shield. Now, if you posed it this way and it was looking that way, you wouldn't see it, but it's a shame knowing it's there, but the shield does look really, really nice. So that's just really unfortunate that they all do have that. And looking at the articulation on all these figures, now I'm not gonna go through it all, just because there's plenty of reviews and stuff out there that will show that, but just a couple of little bits that, mainly on these older style figures, they are a bit more restricted than the new ones. So obviously we don't have the drop down hips or nothing like that, which is a blessing because they are a lot stiffer and they do move a lot better than a lot of the remastered figures. You do tend to find that anything with a drop down hip seems to be prone to loosening. Whereas on the other end of the scale, you do see these older figures that tend to be a bit too stiff at times. Obviously the older figures do have pins in the arms and the knees. And the only real difference is the neck joints, so you can't actually turn around the neck. And they don't look overly great, these necks. But particularly for the female figures, this is a blessing, so we do actually get a double jointed arm. On the older figures, we did see a single jointed arm. And as you can tell, the neck does look a lot better on these figures. You can get some really, really nice poses with these and having a drop down hips, they do have some benefits, but as I said, they do tend to be a little bit loose at times, but they do pose up really nice. Now I'm not saying that the original ones don't at all because they do and they are still pretty good. I think Hasbro do a pretty good job with stuff like that in this and it is hopefully just teething issues where you're getting looseness and stuff with the hips. And looking at the accessories that they do come with, so I do have to say the remaster figures takes this 100%. And now there are some bits lacking where you look at the Red Ranger and he does not come with a civilian head. So this is off of the first release of Jason. And for whatever reason, that is a massive shame because you are kind of forced into going out and finding one or having a really weird looking display. I would say with these original boxes, they are limited to what you can get. So if you're looking at Tommy here, most of the accessories apart from the hands that he comes with and obviously the head. They are all here and on him and you are limited to what you can fit in that box. Whereas this one, they kind of tend to cram a lot into one little bag. Now the remastered, you've got to bear in mind, they do come with three versions of the Blade Blaster. They came with quite a few extra hands, the Morpher, the Helmet and the new Lightning Effect pieces, which do look really nice. So for £33.99, you do get a lot. The figures do look great, but is all that stuff that we should have got in this version. Looking at the accessories, the remastered ones are painted a lot better. So you can definitely see the difference when you're looking at the different flutes. So this is obviously the one that the remastered comes with, and this is the one that comes in the original. So there is minimal paintwork on this to try and give it a likeness, whereas this one seems to have had a lot more effort put in and does look really, really nice. Comparing the two sets of figures together, it is really difficult to compare them because there's so many factors that you'd need to think of when trying to make this collection. Of course, for the inbox collector, as I've said many times, you have to bear in mind that there's potentially stuff missing out of the remastered. In the windowed box, in the original release, you know what's in there and you know if something's missing. The articulation on the remastered figures 
All in all, they are better, of course. They're always looking to make improvements. And you do obviously get a lot more accessories with the remastered figures. You can see that there has been a bit more effort put into the paintwork on the remastered figures. But to be honest, I think it does come down to price point. So if you was to pick up this Green Ranger sealed, you would have to buy two figures just to get what you're getting out of this one. However, those two figures are probably going to cost a lot less than buying this. I think you've also got to bear in mind what you want out of your collection. So if you're an out-of-box collector and you're just looking to make a nice display, remaster is definitely the way to go. And I know a lot of people that have sold their original figures to replace with these remastered. For me personally, I want to complete the line and I really hope that they do continue at a later date. So I was always going to pick these up anyway. But seeing as I am an out-of-box collector, I would consider that if I was just starting my collection, I probably would have just started with the remastered and maybe not have gone the original figure route. A lot of the original figures are hard to get hold of now, but like I say, they are more popular and sought after than the remastered. Now, I'm no expert in collecting or anything like that, but I do think that the original figures are still going to hold their money over the remastered figures. You can already see that a lot of the popular remastered, like the green and the red that people are going to want, are still easy to find. The blue one, again, is sort of going the route where it's getting a bit more difficult to find now. So with all that in mind, is it worth it? I believe absolutely this is worth collecting. So as I said before, for the inbox collector, it is not a necessity and I am a strong believer that there's a possibility it's gonna bite you in the bum later on. The fact that you're not knowing what you're gonna get inside is very risky and you could be holding on to these figures for quite a while before you find out. For those of you that didn't get the chance to get the original figures, this is a massive plus to be able to grab this whole set that are quite readily available. There is a lot you can do with these figures, so I definitely think that they are something more for the outbox collector, someone who's going to pose and display as I have here. But boxed or unboxed, they are a great addition to your collection and a nice bit of nostalgia knowing that it has been 30 years since the Power Rangers first aired on TV. So would I buy them again? Absolutely. If I didn't have the original figures and it, I was just getting into the line, I wasn't looking to complete the whole collection, I probably would just stick with these. But as always, this is just my opinion, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this something you picked up or not? For me, this was a definite easy grab and I have enjoyed every minute of playing about with these figures. If you like this video, please leave a like and if you want to see more, please consider subscribing. And as always, I appreciate you tuning in. Hope that you all enjoy your figures and I will see you next time. Time. 